The hoi hoi. Let's talk about me as a wee eight-year-old lad. You see, when I was eight years old, my parents took my brother and I to a go-kart track for the very first time. I was super pumped. I was sure I'd be a genius at it with all the totally realistic racing games I played non-stop. So we get to the go-kart track and get the safety spiel from the totally uninterested 16-year-old working there and off we went. And within two minutes, I not only crashed my go-kart to the point where it stopped working entirely, but also flipped it on on its side. My brother, on the other hand, won first place. I was totally fine physically, but I needed to try again so I could beat my no good, stupid, dumb, dumb brother. So off I go again, and I didn't crash this time, but I kept bumping into the walls and going off into the grass. And this time, I get last place. An improvement. When I finished the race and was getting out of the go-kart, clearly dejected, that teenager who was clearly just working there over the summer to make a quick buck leans over to me and says some of the most profound stuff I've ever heard in my life. He looks right at me and says, don't look at your brother or anyone else. Just focus on where you're going. From then on, I start getting first place every single time. Just focusing on my path and my results led me from worst to best instantly. And when it comes to our careers in game audio, we also need to be doing the same, focusing on our own path and our own trajectory. Sure, I and other people can give you lots of great advice, but how you apply it and how you'll use it will differ radically from you to the next person. And to offer more perspective for you and show you how paths can differ radically even doing the exact same job in the exact same field, I've invited my good buddy and amazing sound designer and star YouTuber Marshall McGee on to offer his sagely wisdom on top of my own. So with that, here's what we're going to be covering today. Part one, the myriad of different paths in game audio. Part two, do you even need to go to school to work in game audio? And part three, getting that first job. Like I mentioned before, there are countless different ways to make it in game audio. Many of the people watching this want to be a composer or sound designer, some derivation of those two though. Even just within those two jobs, there's no one right way to make it. If you listen to my podcast, you'll find that every single game audio guest has a radically different career path. And a lot of people in the game industry now never studied any sort of game audio or sound design or music formally. They might have worked as a sound or music person in a tangential field and stumbled their way into game audio or intentionally came in and learned as they went. All that to say, getting a job in game audio doesn't require any special prerequisite other than a huge desire to learn and execute on those learnings. But let's check with Marshall to see how he even got started in game audio in the first place. There's a couple elements to it. So <laughs> what you're referring to, I think, is the moment where I heard Skrillex in high school with uh, our friend Zach. Heidi, he was sort of showing people music. He's kind of this piano prodigy in, in high school. And he was like, oh, you guys got to check out this this guy Skrillex. And I was like, what? That doesn't even sound like, is that a band? Like, I didn't know what that was, you know? And so that got, that just got me hooked right away on sound design. I, I wasn't really into sound design before that. I was playing guitar. I was into music, but you know, within a month that became like a project I was doing at school was like trying to make a growl bass. It came up because I love games. I'm, I'm a consumer of games as much as I am, you know, a maker of game, like I, I, I love to be in touch with that side of like just a. I love games. I love to play new stuff. I love to hear what people are doing, and so like that love of games is what made me think a career in this field would be so much better than a career in film audio to me. But you might be asking, what about education? Don't you need to go to school and study game audio to work in this field? In a word. No. Yes, I went to music school at the Berklee College of Music, and I was lucky enough to study under a brand new professor, Michael Sweet, who is an incredible game audio legend. He even made the startup sound for the Xbox 360. And he also has such good hair. Such a perfect salt and pepper. One day I too will achieve hair as fine as he. And then I will become too powerful for this earth. But Marshall took a bit of a different path with his game audio education. So let's get into that. So I actually applied to the first college I went to, Eugene Lang College for one year in New York City. I went there because they had a budding audio program and they were, you know, doing a lot of podcast editing and stuff. And then a year into college there, I sort of had, you know, this moment with a professor where I was like, listen, I feel like I've done all the classes already in my first year. Like I took three of them and like, here I am. And I want to do like three more years of this. Like, can I do this at this college? And he said, you know what? 
I have to be honest, like you're gonna have to transfer if you wanna do that. I was like, okay, that's what I'll do. And so I transferred to Emerson in Boston, which I knew had a robust film audio program, but I also knew did not have the best or like the most uh, readily available game audio classes out there, which I mean, I haven't applied to college in a, a number of years now, but I imagine it's like pretty similar now. It's kind of hard to find a game audio program. So yeah, I went to Emerson and studied all the film audio I could there. And on the background, like in the, on the back burner through YouTube, through game audio meetups, through, you know, talking to you, bo bothering you on online. <laughs> like I was, uh, you know, kind of had this like game audio on the back burner and all my classmates were like, oh yeah, I'm going to do podcast editing. And they're at the New York city conventions talking about, oh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking I want to go into, to work at Skywalker. And I'm kind of always like, do you guys not understand that like games are where it's at? Like the, everyone should be like, this is so much more exciting. Like I was so into it. So I spent all my extra energy kind of like making that happen, trying to make game audio happen for me. And, uh, and that's what I did at college was just exactly that pretty much. Even though we both went to school though, I do wanna make sure you know that you don't necessarily have to. Sure, it's nice and it's super helpful, but it's also out of the price range of frankly, most people. And there are tons of great self-taught audio people out there. But nowadays when it comes to education, you can hire a one-on-one -on -one teacher, join an online course like one of my free ones, read books, or just network your way into finding jobs or mentors for less than a 10th of the cost of a college education. Nowadays you have options and they're actually really, really good. But no matter what, you have to put in the work. A lot of it. And speaking of which, all that education is usually done for one reason, getting us that elusive full-time game audio job. So let's hear how Marshall made that happen. I showed up to Boston Festival of Indie Games, which took place at, in, in two gymnasiums at MIT. You know, you'd walk past all these booths and there were two guys like writing code for a portal inspired kind of puzzle game. And you're like, oh, what is it? Like, I mean, it's just so cool. And like, it, the community was so vibrant and uh, I remember it being like, just, okay, yeah, I'm doing the right thing. Like this is a really cool meetup. So I would go to this, I, I had a bunch of business cards printed that said, you know, Marshall McGee, <laughs> game sound designer, which is a title that I was certainly not qualified at the time to print on anything, but I would go and show up and then hand this out. And I would say, I work for free. I don't do, I don't even charge. <laughs> I would say like, I just want a game to work on. Like I don't even charge money. So like, just why would you not hire me? Even then I only got like two people in the whole festival to like respond to my email. I sent over YouTube videos instead for my resumes. And that's kind of what transitioned me. The, the opportunities that, that opened up for me were literally everything. I mean, I, I owe everything to those videos because that's how I got my first internship with Avalanche. I mentioned this in, a, in the video that I made on how I got into the industry, but I sent out an email to maybe a dozen or more studios that I was, that I was interested in working at or interning for. And I just say, I said, hey, here's my work. Here's my YouTube, my YouTube channel. I'll fly, like I'm in your city next week already. And I lied, I said I was in the city already. And then I just was like, oh, can I stop by? And my plan was that if any of them responded, I would just fly to the city and, <laughs> and like show up. And so I only got one response and it was uh, my future manager, Jason Cantor at Avalanche, who said, uh, you know, the videos were cool. Like, you know, you want to stop by and whatever. And so I said, yeah, and uh, it became a thing. So I, I owe everything to YouTube. It's um, it, it's given me the whole, the whole career that I have, which is, uh, I'm really lucky. Marshall's path is again, a bit different from mine. I personally showed up to countless game jams, but the most important to my career was the global game jam, which happens once a year, every single January. January. And for those of you who don't know, a game jam is basically an online or in-person get-together where people make games over a short or long period of time based around a theme. Usually all the game development teams are made up of total strangers and are made up on the spot at the start of the event. Game jams rule. Do them. And do a lot of them. And there's going to be links down below to help you find a game jam near you or one that's completely online. So going to a global game jam back in 2011, I ended up doing sound design for a couple teams. And one of the teams, that I ended up working with went on to create a tiny game called Tesla the Weatherman. And they hired me to do their sound design. It was my first ever pro game and it was all thanks to making garbage with strangers over a weekend. But note that Marshall and I's paths both required showing up. And you'll notice that that's true of everybody's career that you hear about. They all showed up in some way, shape or form, whether digitally, in person or both. Ideally, eventually when things calm down, do both. You can't just lock yourself away, not talk to anyone and think it'll all work out. Every artistic field is ludicrously competitive and the way you break through the noise is by actually being someone that people know, like, and trust. You don't have to be the best, but people do need to know you exist. But Marshall, you white chocolate walnut tangerine tart, you ask. I don't live in the US, so none of this applies to me and I can never succeed. 
I, it's funny. It's funny that people's instinct is to think that it's not wide open or that somehow you have to be in the U.S. because it's so untrue. The thing everyone learned during COVID is that you can work from anywhere as long as you do a good job and deliver your stuff on time. So if there's any time in history where you can do game audio work from anywhere in the world, it's right now. I mean, if my coworkers were in any other country, I wouldn't even probably know. So yeah, I think it's inspiring the level of global access that game devs right now have to game audio work. I mean, you can find someone talented in China, someone talented in India, someone, and they just, they do the work, they send it over and it's great. I mean, there's, it's just, it's wide open. Yeah, I know people doing great work from all over the world who are clients are in Oregon and they're, you know, it's just small devs are popping up everywhere and they need audio work. You got to jump in and find it. it. It's it's all around you, you know? While it's true that the US has a ton of opportunity, so do many other places around the world. And what with everything being digital and pretty much totally remote now, even huge name game companies are allowing people to work from home. You can make a great game career happen kind of regardless of where you are, as long as you have the internet. The work it takes to get those jobs will just be a little bit different depending on where you live and where you're at. So let's go over what we covered today. Everyone's path in game audio is different. Getting educated is essential, but it doesn't have to be formal or through college. Your path towards that first game audio job will be completely different from ours, but you do have to show up all the time. And lastly, a 16-year-old at a go-kart track gave me some of the best advice I've ever gotten. So while your career path hopefully doesn't involve flipping over go-karts, know that your circumstances mean that you'll have to do things a little bit differently, and that's part of the process. All right, that's it for today. If you'd like to check out more of my Marshall's incredible stuff, be sure to check out his ludicrously good channel where he breaks down sound design in an insanely brilliant and digestible way. He's basically the YouTube genius I aspire to be one day. And keep an eye out on this channel and my podcast, link in the description below, for the full interview with Marshall coming soon. All right, that's it for now. Go pet a dog.